Okay, so Evgeny, thank you very much and thank you to the university for inviting me. So, um, I'm not going to talk about uh, science and technology per se, because I'm very much behind all of you on these topics. But what I would like to bring to your attention is the fantastic opportunity that uh, uh, AI, machine learning, big data gives uh, uh, to the world. And there are two ways how you can change the world. Uh, using uh, something that you study and you work on every day. You can invent something new, and you all know about uh, phenomenal growth of uh, the five big companies that actually amaze me every day. And if you look at uh, capitalization of these five companies, uh, you know, Microsoft, uh, Google, Amazon, uh, Facebook, uh, you know, these five companies at the best days together, they had a capitalization $4.5 trillion. You know, I was driving in the car and, you know, today market went down. So today it's about 3.8, you know, $4 billion, $4 trillion. But just think about these numbers, $4.5 trillion. This is amazing. Behind this uh, big money, well, you know, I forgot to ask you, do you guys like to make money? I do. And that's what business is about. And, you know, if there will be only one takeaway from my small talk that, uh, um, you know, to make money is actually very, very good. You know, one of my uh, mentors told me, you know, find out where money is and go there. So that's what the business is about. So these companies, you know, they... They change the world through the innovative ideas, right? But there is also the world of all technologies. You know, all these Boeing companies, Ford companies, IBM companies, the companies that exist for 100 plus, 50 plus years. And there is a fantastic opportunity to transform these companies and make trillions of dollars in this traditional business. So we'll talk a little bit about this today. So. Uh, what I want uh, to talk a little bit about the transformation that's going on in aerospace and maybe in more general sense about the importance of uh, um, bringing together great technologies, something that you are studying and you work on, and uh, the great new business model. So the idea of my talk today is that I will give you a snapshot of what we do in aerospace but this is not that important. But then I will talk about what we try to do in the very, very conservative big companies. My company is 160,000 people. And there is hundreds of the companies of this scale that were born 100 years ago trying to change them, to catch up with these great companies. Because I really believe that through transformation that AI can bring to the traditional old companies, you can actually reach this level of making money in the traditional businesses. But for that, you need to think not only about technologies, not only about science, but about entrepreneurship spirit that uh, the uh, startups are so famous for at the huge companies where hundreds, thousands of people work together every day on traditional products. And you also need to think about how you can bring the new business models and the new business ideas to this world of uh, conservative old companies. So that's what I try, uh, I will try to explain today. So we'll talk a little bit about how to make money. We'll talk a little bit about business models and I will give you a snapshot of what we do in aerospace. Next chart, please. Next chart. So, you know, I, I'm not going to spend much time on these few charts, but my assistants put them together and I agree with everything that is written here. You guys are in the most exciting part of the professional world. You know, this is the sexiest job that you will have to be the uh, data scientist or to be the data analyst or to be the data engineer, whatever the, the current term is. I'm not current on this. And you know, there is huge proof of this. You know, there is trillions of dollars invested. And of course, you know, these five big companies that make $4 trillion 
in capitalization every day, they invest hundreds of billions of dollars. But what is really amazing that the traditional companies from the old world that I represent, they also invest many, many billions of dollars. And they try to catch up with this new world, with the world of the, привет. With, I, I just saw a few of my, uh, a few of my scientists here, привет. Uh, you know, with this new world, uh, uh, with this new world of these companies that were born only 20, 25 years ago. Next chart, please. So this is the old chart. Data is the new gold. You know, you all know this. Next. You know, this is uh, one of the charts that shows that, you know, there is hundreds of billions of dollars to be made today and in future uh, on leveraging big data and artificial intelligence. Next chart. And, you know, we all saw the fundamental transformation that AI, big data, and machine learning brought uh, to the traditional industry. Look at retail. Who could think, you know, when I was uh, at your age, that uh, um, we will buy so much through internet? Just think about the Amazon phenomena and think about one trillion dollar capitalization of the company that Jeff Bezos created in Seattle, where I worked for almost 10 years for the Boeing company. You know, Amazon, Microsoft, and Boeing, you know, we're all located in Seattle State, Washington, in, in, in one town. So we, we watch these guys developing. Look at finance, look at the telecom, look at the health industry. But, you know, I want to talk about two conservative uh, industries. I will touch a little bit upon automotive industry and we'll talk a lot about aerospace. You are in the most exciting world. Congratulations. Next chart, please. So let's just talk a little bit about the examples of uh, analytics but you know what i will show you today it's all about products and a little bit about services it's not about the new business ideas that we'll talk at the end but this is very exciting look at the autopilot autopilot exists for about maybe 60 65 years today we can safely take off and land at anywhere at any condition any vehicle the reason why we don't have unmanned aeroplanes that will uh, uh, bring actually safety to the new uh, level is us. Billions of passengers. Last year, our industry uh, carried uh, 4.1 uh, transactional passengers. It means 4.1 billion times somebody went and bought the ticket. 4.1. So this 4.1 billion transactional passengers that uh, go on the jet aeroplanes, they just mentally not ready to fly from one hour to 18 hours without pilots. But actually, if you think about the most modern aeroplanes that I will talk about, like 787 Dreamliner, this machine doesn't need a pilot. The traditional aeroplanes, you know, the old school aeroplanes, 737s, A320s, you know, they, they were uh, designed for pilots to fly. 787 and the future generations of aeroplanes, they were designed for pilots to manage, if they want to, the computer program. So actually, you can fly today any vehicle without uh, man. Next chart, please. You know, this is uh, some of the new developments that we are working on. You know, today there is billions of people who don't fly only because there is not enough infrastructure around the world. For, for instance, in India, you know, there's hundreds of millions of people who actually have money already to fly cheap. But, you know, for them to get to the closest airport, they need to drive uh, or to take a train for about four or five hours. So the future is with this unmanned uh, passenger air vehicles. And we actually prototyped last year one of those. This is the electrical vehicle, which is absolutely autonomous. It will take up to four passengers anywhere, you know, close to the airport, you know, around 200, 300 kilometers. It will bring you straight to the, to the gate. And of course, you know, there is a lot of drones, you know, in the military and uh, defense world. Next chart, please. You know, we also applied the best of artificial intelligence to the very, very sophisticated unmanned undersea vehicles. This is the vehicles that the Boeing company produce for the world. These vehicles, you know, uh, allow you absolutely autonomously uh, to explore the sea 
uh, to protect the world better, to do many, many missions. The interesting system which is on the right is called wave gliders, and this is also the best of artificial intelligence. This is the very sophisticated antennas that can fly on the surface of the sea, and the purpose of this uh, product is to connect everything that goes on very deep in the sea with everything that's going on on the ground, in the air, and in the space. Next shot, please. And of course, you know, there is a lot of autonomous and artificial intelligence applications in the space and satellite business. This is all our products. Next. And of course, you know, Boeing was the inventor of the missile defense. What is better than missile defense can uh, prove that artificial intelligence and uh, data can change and protect the world. Next chart, please. But also, you know, I want to bring your attention to something that actually next door at the Skolkovar Research Center, uh, at the Boeing Skolkovar Research Center we are working on, it's called knowledge-based engineering. This is how you can fundamentally design aeroplanes or space vehicles many times faster and many times better. Because we don't need to recreate the knowledge that was created by somebody long ago. If you designed a small door for the small aeroplane and you believe that this design is efficient enough, you don't need to design it for a big aeroplane if there will be a lot of similarities. If there is at least 80% similarities, uh, the artificial intelligence uh, algorithm will design it for you. It can dramatically reduce the design cycle for the new products. Next chart, please. And of course, robotics. When I joined the Boeing company 26 years ago, we had mechanics with the riveting machines. And today at our shops, we have Kuka robots, you know, the same robots that assembly the cars, assembling huge aeroplanes. The difference is, this is the picture of the assembling of the 777 Boeing, is that there is about 20,000 parts on the average car, there is about five and a half million parts on the aeroplane of 777 size. And they are very, very complex. Next shot, please. And of course, you know, additive manufacturing will be based in future on big data, on machine learning, on artificial intelligence. I'm so happy that here at this institute, they pay a lot of attention not only to the basic education of AI, but also to the application of AI to additive manufacturing. That's something that my research center, which is next door, will work with Skoltier on. Next chart, please. And smart materials. You know, this is not a Boeing picture. This is from Google Smart Materials. But this is the materials that will have sensors and materials that will adjust, adapt uh, to the loads, to the temperatures. And these materials will change the whole world. Next chart, please. Now, this is all about products. AI in products. And I would say that as much as I am excited as a former engineer and a former scientist uh, to see this developed, this is not what will bring trillions of dollars to us, to you. And I am going to talk about something else. I would argue that today, as much as I appreciate all the importance of these great products that I showed you, services are way more important. I just want to give you one example. When I started to work for Boeing, we had a very small number of sensors on our aeroplanes. Today, we collect so much data that we are drunk with data. We don't know what to do with data. But every small system, every small unit on the aeroplane has a sensor. Everything is recorded. Aeroplanes became the objects of internet, everything went, everything goes uh, every second to the ground. So we actually own the largest data sets in the world. What can we do with this? Next chart, please. Let me just give you one example. This is the most sophisticated aeroplane that I had the pleasure to work on uh, in early 21st century. For five years, I was part of the leadership team that designed this aeroplane. Today, we produced 850 Dreamliners. 871 as of today, you know, and uh, each of these Dreamliners has many, many dozen thousands of sensors. And before, that was the data that was occasionally used when we had the accident or incident. I want to show you what we do today with this data. Now, this uh, small cartoon was made almost five years ago for me for actually a presentation that I made uh, to the Yandex 
board of directors about the importance of machine learning. So the number that we used in this cartoon was 150, right? You know, 150. So just multiply it by five. Here we go. What if every time you stepped in your car, you had a mechanic with you, and he looked under the hood before you hit the ignition, then watched every system until you arrived at your destination? That's what happens every time a 787 Dreamliner flies. No other airplane in the sky is monitored this much. Every detail from cabin temperature to air speed is sent straight to an operations control center near Seattle, Washington. A team of experts monitors up to 140,000 data points on every one of the nearly 100 Dreamliner planes, from the time their engines turn on until they turn off, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. 140,000 data points times 100 planes in the air, that's 14 million data points. 14 million data points times the more than 40,000 787 flights so far is, well, a lot. Needless to say, the Ops Center is getting pretty smart. Individual flight data is compared to the entire fleet of 787s. The Ops Center can then analyze the fleet's data to provide an even better Dreamliner flying experience. And this can lead to future innovations. It's like your mechanic having a team of experts monitor your car's data and compare it to all other cars like it. But how does this help you, the passenger? Since every 787 has the unique power to tell on itself when any issue, no matter how small, needs to be addressed, ground crews can be ready to go as soon as the plane touches down. The data points help them identify precisely what and where the issue is, so no time is wasted trying to figure out the source. Picture your car having its own on-call pit crew, ready, waiting, and aware of the exact condition as soon as you pull into your garage. Now, imagine your car traveled as much as a 787, several different routes every day in different conditions. You'd want some support. The 787 Dreamliner, like all commercial airplanes, is a workhorse. Despite a busy schedule, and thanks in part to its comprehensive monitoring, it has performed remarkably well since its debut in the sky. And the more than 10 million Dreamliner passengers are experiencing fewer delays. This is the example that I want to bring to your attention, because the message here as much as I'm excited about all these products that I showed a minute ago, unmanned vehicles, uh, global missile defense, uh, the most advanced satellites, this is where you make way more money, and it's called services. So yes, uh, artificial intelligence is uh, the blood of our business, but the traditional thinking is uh, try to apply the best of uh, technologies, including AI, uh, to your products. And I would argue that uh, as much as I love products with new technologies, services uh, is the way to make trillions of dollars. And this is why a few years ago uh, at the Boeing company, we uh, made a small revolution. So the Boeing company is 103 years old. Bill Boeing created this company in uh, uh, <coughs> Uh, 1916, and uh, so we are 103 years old. And our traditional thinking were products, aeroplanes, missiles, space uh, vehicles, and we pioneered many of these products. Everything that I showed you before is about AI in products. Services is something that will make you way more money. We estimate today the market for aeroplanes in the next 20 years is $6.8 trillion, huge market, one of the largest markets in the world. The services for all these aeroplanes is $9.1 trillion. And when you think about services, you think about mechanics, you know, maintaining an aeroplane, but think about services the way uh, Larry and Sergey were thinking about um, making life of people different when they invented search engine, when they invented Google. Think about services the way uh, Jeff was thinking about Amazon when he created uh, the internet-based retail phenomenon, correct? So this is something that touches upon billions of people, makes the life of billions of people easier. 
So remember, you know, I have 4.1 billion transactional passengers. So we actually have the captured audience not less than uh, Google and Amazon. So if we will go through the services, not only to the airlines, which is huge business, $9.1 trillion, this is only servicing airlines in the B2B, business-to-business -to -business, business model. But we will do exactly what Amazon or Google did when they went B2C, business-to-customer, and they brought the best of uh, big data, machine learning, artificial intelligence to every human being, to the billions of people, made life of billions of people better, happier, then this is where you can make trillions of dollars. You need to completely shift the thinking uh, from cars and aeroplanes to Uberization, to how you can use the cars to make the life of billions of people different. And in aeroplanes, I will show you how you can make the life of passengers better. So one of the first takeaways from uh, today's talk that I would like you to remember is that I truly believe that the real huge value of everything that you study is in services. And business ideas are probably more important than the algorithms and the technologies. And uh, this is just proved by the numbers. So this is why we created the third company. We traditionally, for 103 years, built aeroplanes, missiles, and defense systems, and space vehicles. And uh, we had two business units. One was working commercial aeroplanes, the other was working space and defense. And we created the third business unit called services, Boeing Global Services. So I had a pleasure to be part of this transformation and I work there as the chief information officer. We believe that the engine of the growth company, the, the, engine, the growth engine of the Boeing company is services. We have today around $20 billion. We'll have by 2025 $50 billion. But what is really important for my stakeholders is that this is the most profitable business. So services is something that will make big companies, huge, old, traditional companies looking like this, looking like Googles, Microsofts, Amazons, and Facebook. So not all of us will start your own business. Not all of us will join these great brands. Some of you will come and work for me or for the fourth company. And if you will just remember that the services with all the advantages that your technologies can bring to services is the key to growth. You will be very, very needed. You will be very valued. Next chart, please. This is, you know, uh, the first uh, conclusion that I want to make. The second conclusion, I want to explain to you a simple way how you make money in the big companies. So just imagine the bottom line of any big company. So what actually is important for this bottom line? is how much you sell and how much earnings, how much profit you make. So if you think about this bottom line, the growth is very important, but the cost of your product is also very important. So if you want to make a contribution to the huge, big traditional business, you need to think about both. You need to think about growth, and in your world, you know, you need to ask yourself a question, how AI, machine learning, or big data can help to grow the business. Or you need to think about cost. How big data machine learning or AI can reduce the cost. If you work on one of those or better on both, you affect the bottom line. So you will be very needed in the big companies. And that's what we concluded. And what came to mind, and I was also very lucky to be part of this transformation of the Boeing company, is that many years ago, in the middle of the 90s of the last century, when many of you were very, very young, or maybe were not born, you know, we uh, transformed the Boeing company using the best of the lean technologies. Lean is something that you can teach hundreds of thousands of people. Every Boeing employee now understands the basics of lean. And what we concluded that AI, machine learning, and big data is something similar that maybe can bring the bigger transformation to the Boeing company. And we began to teach hundreds of thousands of people. I know it will be very trivial, but I want to show you what we teach people 
And all these people are not scientists. Some of them engineers, but some of them mechanics. But they all need to understand the basics of what you are working on. And that's another conclusion that I want you to remember. Scale in the transformation of the big companies, traditional companies, is extremely important. Next chart, please. So we show them this. We show them the goal to build a data-driven organization. You know, this is the Harvard Business School chart that you probably saw many times. And we try to explain to them that data is new gold. They need to treasure their data and they need to learn how to use data. And you need to have management and organizational support on a huge level for 200,000 people. Next chart, please. We created one of the best in the world uh, specialized organization with about uh, 4,000 best data scientists. We will be welcome uh, to uh, to review your uh, applications, you know, and maybe you can join uh, this organization. We call it Analytics. This is the uh, team of international data scientists that can bring the best of the eye to our world. And then we begin to teach people. We created this organization in parallel with our IT organization. Next chart, please. And every time when you have a small team that addresses one of the three problems, how you can grow a business, how you can reduce cost, or how can you work much faster. You actually follow this simple chart. You know that every team will have a business partner from analytics, the guys like you, who can come and bring the best of AI, machine learning, and big data uh, to the world of real problem solving. And then you, as a business leader with your team, will sit down with this analytics partner, and you will formulate more or less standard task that will sound trivial for you scientists but can change the world and can save us billions of dollars and that's what we do on a scale when you do it on a scale the transformation can be amazing next shot please we try to apply it to the very standard problems that every company or every team has whether it's cash management it's the um, inventory management it's the supplier management or it's the quality management. In every business, you have these four big pockets. And if you apply the best of machine learning, big data, and AI to these four big uh, pockets, then you can save billions of dollars. Next chart, please. And then we begin to build the library of standard solutions and success stories. So actually, if you manage your cash in the F-16 fighter program and you had some fantastic results it's a shame if the new market aeroplane at the boeing commercial aeroplane group will not use exactly the same so repeatability and scale is the key to success next chart please and there is fantastic results just in four years after we began to train people and we trained almost 80,000 people from 160,000, we began to see fantastic results in every part of our business next chart please and uh, this is, you know, the interactive course that my team put together for all the Boeing employees. It takes about 45 minutes for a person who doesn't know anything about your technologies uh, to get familiar with the terms, but also know whom to call and ask for help. And these guys from Analytics Group will come and work with you. And about one third of this uh, special task teams show our successes. This is the key to the transformation. This is the key to reduce the cost, grow the business, affect the bottom line, and transform the big companies. Next chart, please. And uh, this is the result of the lean application to the Boeing company. Today, I would say 25 years after we first time went to Toyota and learned lean from the Japanese companies, and I was part of the, one of the first teams that the Boeing company sent to Japan on this mission we can reduce our cycle time by 50%. We can improve the quality by 55%. And we use two times less space. This is when we moved from the traditional way of doing business to the moving lines, not only in assembly, in engineering, but also in everything else that we do in our business. We train hundreds, thousands of people on the basics of lean. This is exactly what we do right now. We train people on AI, on machine learning, and basics. So scale matters. You want to transform big giants, scale matters. Next chart, please. 
And now I want to talk about the most exciting thing, you know, that I'm thinking about is the new business models. How you can invent inside the big traditional companies something that Page and Brill, you know, or Volash uh, created, you know, when they created Google and Yandex. How you can, inside Boeing and Ford, create something similar to what uh, Bezos created when he created uh, Amazon. So here we go. Let's talk a little bit about this guy, Elon Musk. So, uh, and I want to uh, take a small off-ramp and talk not about aerospace, but about automotive industry. So what is so interesting about Elon, that he went to the automotive industry with the uh, background as the wild but extremely successful IT entrepreneur. So we all know about PayPal, you know, about Neuralink, about OpenAI, about all his data-based, uh, internet-based successes. And now he wants to change the most traditional and conservative industries. One is called automotive industry, and he created Tesla. And the other is called aerospace, and he created SpaceX. And he brings uh, his reputation as the inventor, creator, digital transformation leader to this traditional world. And here we go. What happens? Next chart. The world believes in him. Believes to the extent that I, as a traditional conservative businessman, think is not real. But the world does. I was at the Tesla plant. Believe me or not, this is a very bad plant. You know, the, 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 uh, the, the vehicles are very beautiful. So he, he, he has very creative designers. But actually, the plant that he managed is the old Toyota plant. And there is only one plant. And he has three models. They're all beautiful. But the uh, idea, the engineering idea to have, you know, uh, many dozen thousands of the small batteries connected, you know, to the nice flat screen, you know, in a very nice composite uh, case is not that innovative. He has only three car models, one bad old plant, and he's always behind. He's behind on his promises to the investors, on his deliveries. The car is cool. But from a business point of view, he's a total failure. But capitalization of the Tesla company is bigger than the Ford company. The Ford company has 20 models, 70 plants, 100 years old, and he has two times more capitalization. Why it is? Because the world believes in him as the guy who can bring the best of the future to today. So if you come to the big companies, Try to bring a little bit of this. Try to show, I see, you know, five of my best engineers, you know, and what I try to teach them, that they bring the future to us. So try to bring the best of this world inside Boeing and Ford, and then we'll make together a big change. Next chart, please. And uh, authorization. You know, so I talked with both of them. I talked with Garrett, and I know very well Dave. So these two guys, simultaneously, in San Francisco, one is American, one is Israeli guy, invented Uberization. So, you know, almost simultaneously. One was on uh, travel, working on his startup, Dave. He didn't have enough money. He went to Israel. He didn't have uh, so big uh, interest from investors. And uh, so that's why you know, get us a little bit behind. But this is the one algorithm that actually both of them developed because of curiosity. They changed the automotive industry. Just think about this. Today, utilization of the car on the average because of Uberization is seven times higher than uh, 20 years ago when we bought cars for our individual driving. So we utilized car the best, 5 7% of the time. Those cars utilize 50% of the time. What it means? It means that all these great brands that I put here on the bottom, they will have a challenge. They eventually will need five times less production capacity. Just think about this. Ford, Toyota, Honda, 
first of all, they will need to design and build the new cars because, you know, all these brands, they competed for my preference, for my personal preference. I like BMW, you know, she likes Honda. You know, it doesn't matter. You need to have reliable, cost-effective car for highest utilization. First time in the history of California, the average age, the f entry age for the car uh, driving license is around 19.2 years. It always was around 18 before. People, you know, prefer Uber. They don't need to have driving license. Many of you probably don't think about getting driving license. I know at least one person in my family who doesn't think like this, you know, and, uh, you know, it's, it's the world that has completely changed. It changed by these two entrepreneurs. The automotive industry that was the core of business for 100 plus years will need to produce five, seven times less cars. What does it mean for the taxi parks, for the dealerships? The whole world changed. So the, the lesson here is the brilliant innovative idea matched with the new capabilities which internet or GPS brought to the world can completely change the way you make money, the way you serve billions of passengers. So again, you know, uh, business model is way more important than even the global missile defense or the automotive pilot as the, as, as the product. Next chart, please. And what it means for us. So I asked myself and I asked my colleagues, why do you need to buy airplane ticket? So I interviewed, you know, dozens of people. There's only four reasons why you need to buy airplane ticket. So you either go on a plane because you have to make a business trip, you work, or you want to take a vacation, you know, or you want to visit your relatives and family. You know, in the United States, everybody go on the aeroplane, you know, for Thanksgiving or for Christmas, and occasionally the company moves you. There is no other reason for you to buy a ticket other than, you know, for aeroplane geeks who just like to fly, you know, every day. So you can imagine that somebody will create the aggregator similar to Uber, and then, you know, you will push one of the four buttons and, you know, because uh, this is a very regulated industry and for the security reason, we know everything about our passengers. We know how old they are, we know where they were born, we have their, you know, face recognition. We'll know so much about you, you know, that these aggregators will make tons of money, similar to what uh, Garrett and Dave uh, made for their companies and for billions of people. Uh, in terms of Uberization. So Uberization will come to civil aviation as well. Next chart, please. And this is what is the most exciting. Remember I talked with you about B2C. So what unites these big companies? Google's, Amazon's, Facebook's, and uh, Apple's. There is only one thing that unites them. You know, they compete with each other. That each of them was created to serve us as individuals. So their business model is not B2B, business to business, or B2G, you know, when I build a missile defense, I work for G, for the government, business to government. It's B2C, it's for ordinary people. And if you will ask the founders of these companies who are thanks God alive, and you will extract from their interviews what actually motivates them. Money doesn't motivate them anymore. Changing the life of billions of people. Google has in their mission, we want to change the life of billions of people. They are not working actually on the problems that do not affect billions of people. Just think about this. Why uh, we had Blackberries, not Apples, as the corporate devices? Because Apple was not interested to work for Bs, for companies. They were interested to work only for Cs, for each of you, right? Only right now, you know, they work a little bit for corporate business. So that is another uh, conclusion that I want to make. The money is in the B2C business models. So I asked myself a question, why the Boeing company makes all the money selling aeroplanes to the airlines or selling services to MROs? But we have 4.1 billion transactional passengers. 4.1 billion people bought tickets last year to fly my aeroplanes. So we invested billions of dollars building these flying machines we have 4.1 billion transactional passengers. Half of these passengers now demand e-life. They want 
on the board of the aeroplane to be as connected as they are connected in the internet cafe and we don't provide these services. Next shot, please. Shame on us. If we won't do it, one of these companies will do it. And that will be real bad because we built these machines, you know, we invested billions of dollars to build tubes with wings. We're actually responsible for your safety when you fly and we want to give this trillions of dollars and services to Samsung's, to Apple's, to Google's, to Netflix. So this is what excites me the most, how you can bring the B2C thinking into the world of the conservative old traditional companies. And there is unlimited opportunity for AI, big data and machine learning. We want to create the ecosystem similar to what Apple or Google create and compete uh, on, on the ground. Because we build machines that fly you, but we also build satellites that connect you with the ground and connect you with the internet. That's where the trillions of dollars in traditional companies are. Remember, you know, on one of the charts, I talked about multiples. Multiples is a financial term that helps you to determine the capitalization of your company. So the reason why Elon Musk with Tesla bad planned three models and always behind the schedule has capitalization bigger than Ford, that the investors give him huge multiples similar to the best of the IT world, similar to the startups, to the traditional business that he is not expert on. They give him huge multiples. This is what I want to have for the Boeing company. I want our multiples to be similar to Google, Microsoft, and Amazon. I want to become the leader of the digital uh, aerospace industry. And if I will do that, then capitalization of the Boeing company will be not $200 billion, it can be $800 billion. It will be similar to Google and to Apple and to Amazon. And that's what my goal is, my team goal is. Next shot, please. Uh, and if we'll do this, we'll have a unique opportunity to match the best of the eye that we already know how to do to make the airline happy. Remember, we're in B2B business, so we know about digital services for the airlines, how to make them happy. If we will learn how to make the passenger happy, then we will go into the B2C world, and that's how we will catch up with Google's, Amazon's, and uh, Apple's. Next chart, please. And it's very simple. Because, you know, when Google and Microsoft and Apple ask their marketing or development people what the customer wants, they ask the same questions. And I can ask, you know, uh, Clooney, remember there was uh, this movie uh, called <coughs> Up in the Air about the, uh, you know, airline geek who traveled the world and he wanted to collect, you know, one million points on the airline. This, this is George Clooney, Up in the Air, good movie old movie, but look at this. So he was interested to spend less money, to save time, to enjoy experience, and to have personal attention. That's exactly what Google and Apple provide to you on the ground, why we cannot do it in the air. Next chart, please. And that's what we are working on. Next chart. So we found a company, you can actually uh, find this company in the Apple store. It's called App in the Air. Up in the Air was the movie, App in the Air is this company, created by actually a guy who was born in the former Soviet Union in Kyrgyzstan. He works now in Seattle and California. We work with him. He started as the uh, um, air travel concierge. He can provide you any services before or after you travel. We try to work with him on uh, that dream that I described a few minutes ago. Next chart, please. And if we do this, then we will eventually connect the big data that we have from my movie, remember Smart Way to Fly? You know, we uh, have the data from all the sensors with the data that we will connect, uh, collect from the passengers. And if we do this, then we will have real gold, maybe platinum, we'll have the largest in the world, one fl platform, big data, that will be the opportunity for you to do apply all your analytics. And uh, Evgeny, I'm finishing in just one minute because, you know, um, I'm not, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not high on terminology, but you know, but Evgeny explained to me, you know, that, you know, originally I want to call this talk big data and analytics because I don't know what AI 
And then Evgeny explained to me that AI is everything. So you start from data, you go through machine learning, then you have AI that kind of integrates everything, and then you finish with the data. So on this, you know, I would like to finish you, but I want to ask you for help. Next chart, please. This is what we do next door. So next door, we have a big uh, training campus. We have four simulators. You can go during your break and I will show you how we train pilots uh, in three shifts. But then, you know, we have uh, a capacity for up to 100 scientists and some of them will be with you for two uh, weeks here. And we try to put as many sensors as possible on all these uh, simulators and collect big data and apply the best of machine uh, learning and uh, AI to make the training better and to make the flights more safe. This is what we do here. It's called COVID, our research facility. Next chart, please. And I need your help. So what I uh, learned uh, in the last five years when I worked with a lot of people like yourself that uh, we need to do something to make data to be more relative. And we need to do something not to go and ask for human beings to uh, do the subject matter expertise. So I'm very excited with some of the technologies that I found at Oxford, you know, when people try to bring the best of uh, uh, logic and the best of uh, knowledge engineering, building data, gra uh, building knowledge graphs uh, to try to replace some of the human beings as the subject matter experts. And what I also need from you to think every day about new business models and how you can bring the spirit of entrepreneurship the spirit that helped to create Google's, Amazon's, Microsoft's, and Facebook's to us, to the traditional, old, very conservative big companies that built uh, these buildings, built your cars, built aeroplanes, and we can't live without them. So thank you very much. Uh, okay, so um, actually, we have a lot of very interesting questions, and I like to cover several of them. So please comment. First, the first question: In how many years do you think unmanned passenger planes will be widely accepted? In how many years? What? Do you think the industry is very much regulated? See what happened with the two tragic accidents that happened, you know, unfortunately, and my heart is broken when I think about. 300 plus people who lost their lives in the last uh, year with the Boeing 737 MAX. Think about the tragedy in Sheremetyevo with SSJ. Every time when we have the catastrophe with the aeroplane, which is the safest way to travel, you know, media makes it so known for the world, you know, a uh, number of people that die on the roads from the car accidents is uh, many dozen times less than in the air, but every time you know, when something like this happened, regulator, congresses, ordinary people go to step back. People are not ready. So when they will be ready, it will happen. What I think will happen for small uh, uh, delivery uh, uh, tasks like this, you know, uh, autonomous passenger uh, uh, delivery system, uh, you know, it will happen maybe in the next 10 years, depends on the country and regulation. For cargo aeroplanes, it's already happening. You can get your pizza by drone in Seattle, you know. Uh, um, I think, you know, that on the cargo aeroplanes, you know, it can actually happen very, very quickly. How fast it will happen on the commercial passenger aeroplanes, first we need to go from two pilots to one pilot, and then probably to autonomous, so I don't know. Definitely. Okay, uh, another question is, these days, another hot topic is AI for good. How does the defense industry also point, look at this when using AI for defense and security? The algorithms are the same. The beauty of your job is that you work in something that I would call the cross road of technology and business. If you are a good data scientist, everybody will fight for you. The general manager for global missile defense or the general manager for the new market aeroplane would like to have you on the team. Because the problems that you can help to solve are more or less the general problems. Remember my diagram? I will bring the best subject matter experts to work with you to formulate the task that can save us 
billions of dollars or grow our business by billions of dollars. Okay, and the last question is, how does Boeing respond to the current challenges of climate change? Electric, electrical vehicles are an ever some first step. Do you see connections to AI there? Well, you know, everything that relates to aerospace we work on. We were the first, you know, who began to talk about electrical aeroplanes, many of these AI-driven drones are electrical planes, so they're ecologically very friendly. You know, some of them hydrogen uh, uh, fueled aeroplanes, you know, we work on biofuels. But believe me, guys and ladies, you know, this is not as exciting as to think about new business models and services, because this is all products. If you can uh, figure out how to make the life of billions of passengers or billions of uh, people uh, on the ground, billions of people who go and buy something, who call better and easier, this is where you will make trillions of dollars. And defense, you know, will happen. The world will be secured. <laughs>